In this clip, I'm going to go over um, the creation of a power drawbar. This is my Smithy 3-in-1 lathe here. And we will, right now, off we go. So this is the uh, plate that's on the top. It needs to be cut to um, a specific size so the power drawbar pneumatic unit can mount to the uh, to the top of the lathe. So I have this plate mounted on a uh, rotary table. I'm manually turning the rotary table, cutting through it with a half inch carbide bit. There are other ways to do this. I, I, I don't think at the time I had a four jaw chuck. So this is, the old, this is one of the ways that I thought of um, cutting this uh, circle piece out of this out of this I could also I could have also tried to cut it with my plasma cutter but it wouldn't have been that great so this is just what I decided to do um, yeah like I said I didn't have a four jaw but I could have could mount this plate in the four jaw and use a use a cutoff tool to cut the circle to circle to size which I might do next time if I had to do something similar to this because doing it this way was uh, Quite, quite, quite time consuming. Um, there's a shot of the, uh, I think I'm running, yeah, flood coolant right there. And if you watch the previous video, you'd see um, the, how the table manages the, with the overflow from the flood. So we'll just move on with this. There's the piece cut out. Nothing bad happened there. Just kind of popped out, so what I expected. This is the main component. It's a, a piece of one inch um, steel that uh, fits over to the uh, with a spline on the drawbar. So I started by cutting six holes, drilling the six holes, cutting the center hole there. And cutting the center hole bigger and then uh, milling on the rotary table the center hole to fit the six prong spline that's on the top of the on the top of the mill so there you can see it's uh, it's cut to fit the spline There's another photo of of that piece there And yet another photo of that piece there. The holes on the side are for the um, up and down movement. And there I'm just chamfering. I had chamfered the edges uh, just to clean it up a little bit. This is a part that holds the pneumatic tool. Uh, that's the bracket for the pneumatic tool. And there's the pneumatic tool in the bracket. The, the bracket's welded on there now. You can see the top view of how the pneumatic tool is mounted in the in the part. Some small screws, I think they're M5 screws in the top. And there's the plate on the mill. I took the top part off and it's belt driven. Uh, you can see from that angle how it's mounted on. It's just got a sort of pressure fit in that part. And there's the unit pushed onto the um, this blind drawbar. I think that's kind of showing it going up and down. Uh, taking some measurements for the posts which the power drawbar slide up and down on. Welding, welding those in place. Here's a little clip of how, how it slides up and down on there. <coughs> I think there was quite a bit of friction at that point, so uh, up and coming is a little change of plan. There's the unit placed on top of the machine. A different angle of that. And kind of a close-up of how that 
all fits together. They're just machining a part, a threaded part. I don't think I had a cutoff tool at that point, so I was using a um, high speed steel notch tool. Popped off okay in that, but ideally I should have had a cutting, a cutoff tool for that. And there's another part that's just being machined to size. The DRO, just a shot of the DRO there. And there is there is an episode in this series on the installation of the DRO, or there will be. Here's a shot of um, machining the posts that the power draw bar runs on. A couple of shots of that. It's uh, time lapse. It's running at I think 10 times. Pretty straightforward. And a cleanup of that part. This is I uh, switched to a high speed steel bit to try and get the surface finish as smooth as possible so the power draw would run nice and clean over it. Oh, and there's what we had for dinner that day, spatchcock chicken. There's one of the parts, just a photo there. There's a shot of it mounted to the top of the mill. Another shot. Back in the vise, there I think I'm pressing something together. Yeah, pressing those. I put some uh, bearings on there because I couldn't get it to run smooth enough for the friction fit. unit assembled. I used, I added a, the Milwaukee handle on top. That part there I, I did on the mill um, to hold the handle and to control the pneumatic unit. I didn't get any video or, or photographs of the creation of that. But yeah, that Milwaukee handle I thought was a good idea just to swing it back and forth for engaging and disengaging the um, drawbar. There we go, and it's pretty much all assembled here. Just a photo of the R8. And there's the R8 with the drawbar. Oh, and here's a demo. This is a Part that I made for creating the springs. It's a tool holder cut out of aluminum to fit on my tool post and uh, it has the PVC insert when those screws on the top are tightened down it puts enough resistance on the spring to keep the tension as it's being drawn and um, pulling it out I'm moving it as moving my lathe to the seven tooths TPI which is the the speed it goes. This is the first time I think I've drawn a spring, so something goes wrong right about now. Yeah, there. Hey, try number two. That uh, die that's underneath there, I machined that down to the correct diameter. I just drilled a hole in it. You can see the little screw on the left holding the spring in place as it's being drawn out and right to the line. So there you go. There's the finished product. Well, almost the finished product. 
still needed to be stretched and, uh, and tempered. Oh, there's a electric bike I picked up for a couple hundred bucks. It doesn't work. I'll get to that one of these days. And a bunch of springs I did as, as tests. So there's the unit fully installed, assembled, and complete. Put some spacers in there. The springs weren't quite long enough. There you go. All hooked up to the air and everything. All right, so you can see this power drawbar in action here. Oh, I gotta, I gotta turn on the compressor. Hold on. I want to show you something. That again, because the audio was not that great on the last one. I turn on my my air compressor. There we go. And there's probably a lot of background noise, so I'll go closer to this new mic I'm testing out. And there's big air there. That's for the big compressor that's upstairs. I only use that when I really need a lot of air because it's really noisy and uh, pretty much shakes the whole house. There we go. Compressor is charged. So the reason I use that uh, app to, the home app to turn on the compressor, to control the compressor, I mean it's pretty easy just to go over there and push that button right there. But uh, nine times out of ten I found when it didn't have that mechanism, it didn't have that mechanism in the uh, um, controlling it, I would forget to turn it off. I wouldn't know until the next day when I came in the shop and the compressor was going. Well, it would turn on after a little while, but it had been turning on and off all night because, of course, any 99% of all air systems have some kind of leak in them. And this little compressor doesn't use a lot of power, but even so. So anyway, the point is, is that I have it on a timer, so it shuts off by itself at I think I had it set to 4 p.m. and then again at 7 p.m. So if it shuts off at 4, I know it's because I lose compression if I'm still working in here. Turn it back on and then I don't have to worry about turning it back off again. Pretty cool. So let's do a demo of this uh, power drawbar. The springs have got a little bit sloppy here after time, over time. A little bit. A little bit sloppy. I got to work on my tempering of these springs to get them just right. I don't have, have a tempering oven, so it's a little bit of a challenge. So let's get let's, let's chuck up this guy here. Boring head. So how am I going to do this? I'm gonna set this phone down somewhere. Maybe this, maybe I'll just do two parts here. So this is the idea. I you know in the video you saw I had a handle here. Don't really need the handle, it's just it's like this, is, this is engaging it. It's engaging it. Push it down. Sometimes you gotta turn this a little bit to get the splines to line up. You push it down on there. See it grabs. So the other camera should be catch capturing this part, so I'll turn this video off. I think you probably see this if you watched any of my videos already. There. It's good. <coughs> that is in there. Bullet do my work. <coughs> the group. Easy as that. I'll leave myself 15 minutes. Just by virtue of doing that. So that's uh, the end of the power drawbar video. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share. Thanks. See you next time.
So here's a video, uh, it's only a few hours old. This was a walk that we went on just after I filmed that last clip. I hope you enjoy. Where's Moose? There he is. Okay, let's go in here. Got stuck on that branch there, I don't know. One thing what is best, well a couple of things. One is that they're good because they do provide some protection for their chests, especially Milo because he's a bushwhacker, plows through everything. But on the, on the uh, flip side, they don't last long. I think this is a third, Milo's third vest of, in, of the, in the last year. This is Moose's second vest. He's not quite as hard on him. As the professor. <clears throat> the other thing is, uh, they occasionally have a tendency to get caught on things like the I don't know, for a vest I had, initial vest I had, had a big D-ring on the top of it. Like a big D-ring. And uh, on one occasion, Milo was plowing through something. And he got stuck, but he kept plowing through it. Ripped the vest right off of him. Maybe it wasn't as sturdy as these ones are. Like, uh, material-wise. So I, the other one I had, uh, I cut the D-ring off of it. But these these this, this vest that they, these vests that they have on now. They don't have quite as much surface area on the chest that I would like. But regardless of the fact that Moose Milo's on his third one within, within a, about a year, the way these guys push it through the bush here, 
These ones have been sturdier than any of the other ones that I've tried. There's moose. It's funny sometimes what they do here. This moose will wait by the edge of the bush while Milo goes in and does his bushwhacking. So you wait to see if Milo scares anything out. And then those chases after it. Wait, there he is. Hey Milo, where are you? Get in there, buddy. Scares out milk for me. He's just waiting. There, see? He did. He scared out a rabbit. Right there. Moose wasn't quite alert enough to get it. But that's the idea. And they'll carry on like this for a little while. Yeah, Moose got into some burrs there. They call that a successful hike, walk. Uh, but he's covered in burrs. He really needs to get a shave down. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.